Okay, in this video we're going to continue proving the similarity between polynomial rings over a field and the integers. And we're going to prove a property um, that has to do with the greatest common divisor of two polynomials. But before we do that, we need to look at the precise definition of the GCD of two polynomials. So, let's suppose that K is a field and we say that d of x is the greatest common divisor, in other words, the GCD of f of x and g of x in kx, if d of x divides f of x and d of x divides g of x. In other words, f of x is a multiple of d of x, and g of x is also a multiple of d of x. In other words, it's equal to d of x times some other polynomial. And so this that I've uh, squared in pink is the property of it being a common divisor. And so now we need the property that it's the greatest such common divisor, and that comes in the next phrase. So if d hat of x also divides f and g, in other words, it's also a common divisor, then d hat divides d of x. So that makes d hat smaller than d of x, so we're ordering by this divisibility. So divisibility is a partial ordering. Okay, so furthermore, we say that uh, two polynomials are relatively prime if their GCD is 1. So that's the same thing that we do in integers. Okay, so the property that we want to prove is that if d is equal to the GCD of f of x and g of x, then there exist polynomials which we'll call a of x and b of x in kx such that uh, ax times f of x uh, plus b of x times g of x equals d of x. In other words, the greatest common divisor of two polynomials can be written as a combination of those two polynomials. Okay, so let's see the proof which really follows the same trajectory as the proof uh, in numbers. Okay, so we want to consider the following set, which we'll call S, and it'll be the set made up of P of X times F of X plus Q of X times G of X as P of X and Q of X range over all polynomials in K adjoin X. So that's the set that we want to consider. And now, there's like a little bit of a claim that we need to make before we get started, and that is there is a unique polynomial in here that is monic and of lowest degree. So let's maybe put that as an observation. So there is a unique polynomial in S uh, which is monic with uh, the smallest degree. Okay, so what I mean by that is we search through all polynomials inside of S that have minimal degree. Maybe the minimal degree of the polynomials in here is 2. So there's probably a bunch of polynomials of degree 2 inside there, but there's only one of them that is monic. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and see the proof of this little observation, which is actually pretty straightforward. So uh, let's go ahead and suppose that maybe we'll call them u of x and v of x are inside of s of x are inside of s and they both have the property that they are monic and they have minimal degree. So in other words, they both have this property up here. So uh, that means we can write uh, u of x as um, x to the n plus a n minus 1, x to the n minus 1, all the way down to a 0. So we're supposing that this minimal degree is degree n, and then we can also write v of x as x to the n plus b0, sorry, b n minus 1, x to the n minus 1, all the way down to b0. Okay, great. But now, notice that u of x minus v of x is inside of s. 
And so that's actually pretty clear. So if u of x can be written as a combination of f and g, and v of x can be written as a combination of f and g, then definitely their difference can be written as a combination of f and g. So maybe let's like sketch that out. So notice uh, we could write u of x in the following way. So that'll be like p1 of x times f of x plus p q1 of x times g of x. Great, so maybe that's u. And then uh, v of x is going to be uh, p2 of x times f of x plus q2 of x times g of x. But now what happens if we take their difference? So their difference is going to be given by p1 of x minus p2 of x times f of x uh, plus q1 of x minus q2 of x uh, times g of x. But that is most definitely an element from S because it's a combination of F and G. Okay, so I'll clean up this bit of the board and then we'll continue the proof of this little observation. So on the last board, we suppose that u of x and v of x both have this property up here, and then we um, showed that u of x minus v of x is also within this set S. Now the next thing that we want to notice is that u of x minus v of x, using the notation on the last board, looks like this. So it looks like a n minus 1 minus b n minus 1 x n minus 1 plus um, a 0 minus b 0. In other words, the degree of u of x minus v of x, because they were both, both monic, their leading terms cancel, their degree is less than or equal to n minus 1. And why is it less than or equal to and not equal to? Well, that's because this guy right here might be 0. But that is strictly less than the degree of u of x, which is equal to the degree of v of x, which is n. But that was supposed to be the minimal degree of anything inside of S, but what we've done is we found something of degree less than that which is inside of S, but we have two things that we can say. We can either say that this is a contradiction, or we can say that this is actually the zero polynomial, because no such non-zero polynomial exists, and that's what we'll do. And so we have u of x minus v of x equals zero. In other words, u of x equals v of x. So let's see what we have. We started with two polynomials that have this property where they're monic and have smallest degree, but then we showed that those were actually the same polynomial. In other words, there's a unique polynomial in S which has minimal degree and is monic. Okay, so that's going to set us up really nicely for the proof. I'll clean up this bottom half of the board and then we'll continue. So the first step of our proof will be built off of this observation that we did. So in other words, we want to let d of x, b, and s be the monic polynomial with minimum degree. Okay, and so we argued why that there is only one of those, which allows us to use the word the here instead of the word a here. Okay, so now what we want to do is show that d of x divides f of x and it divides g of x. We're actually only going to prove that it divides f of x. Proving that it divides g of x is very, very similar. So let's make that claim. So d of x divides f of x. And so to prove this claim, we're going to use uh, the division algorithm po for polynomials. So let's use division algorithm with um, f of x and d of x. So what that does is that allows us to write f of x equals d of x times, so we need a quotient polynomial. I may reuse uh, q of x for this purpose. So q of x plus r of x. So again, I've got another video where we do the division algorithm for polynomials, and one more where we have corollaries and examples of that that you should check out if you haven't yet. And so what that ensures is that the degree of r of x is bound between 0 and d of x. And I should say the degree of d of x. 
Okay, great. But what do we know? We know that uh, d of x has the minimal degree of any polynomial in this set S. So if we can show that r of x is inside the set S, then r of x has to have degree 0. And that's exactly what we're going to do. And it's actually pretty easy at this point. Notice we can rewrite this thing as r of x equals f of x minus d of x times q of x, like that. But now, given the fact that d of x is inside of s, we can write it in this form. So I'll use a of x and b of x for this. So d of x can be written as a of x, f of x, plus b of x, g of x. Um, and then all of that is multiplied by q of x. But now what we can do is um, rewrite that where we collect the f of x and g of x terms. So let's see, if we collect the f of x terms, we're going to have 1 minus a of x times q of x times f of x. And then if we collect the g of x terms, that's going to be subtracted by b of x times q of x times g of x. So regardless of how you do that, that is going to be within the set S because it is something times f of x plus something times g of x. Okay, so, but what that tells us is that r of x is actually zero. Notice it's not even allowed to have degree zero. In other words, it's not even allowed to be a constant because if it had degree zero, well, then it would be monic with degree zero, which would, means it would be the number one, but then it itself would be the minimal polynomial inside of s. So what we have here is that r of x is actually the zero polynomial. But now if we go back up here and look at this, inserting 0 into this equation, we have f of x equals d of x times q of x, which is the same thing as saying d of x divides f of x. And you can repeat this argument exactly to show that d of x also divides g of x. In other words, d of x is a common divisor of f of x and g of x. Now the next thing that we need to do is show that it is the greatest such common divisor. And I'll do that after cleaning up the board. So, so far we have that d of x is written as a combination of f of x and g of x. It came from that set that we had on the previous board. And we have that d of x divides f of x and d of x divides g of x. So in other words, that minimal element of that set s is a common divisor of f of x and g of x. Now we just need to show it is the greatest such common divisor. So we'll do that by supposing we have another common divisor. So let's suppose that d hat of x is in k of x such that d hat of x uh, divides f of x and uh, d hat of x divides g of x. So what this tells us is that f of x equals d hat of x times u of x, where I'm reusing this polynomial u that was in an observation previously in the proof, but it's not the same polynomial. And then also uh, g of x equals d hat of x times v of x. Great. Now what we're going to do is take this equation right here and this equation right here, which are equivalent to the definition that uh, d hat divides f and g, and we're going to insert them into this guy up here. Okay, so let's see what happens when we do that. So uh, that means d of x equals, so we have a of x um, u of x d hat of x. I'll write it in a uh, slightly different order than it might show up originally just to make it a little bit more obvious what's going on. And then plus b of x times v of x times d hat of x. But now notice we have a common factor of d hat in both of these terms that we can factor out. So here we have a of x u plus b of x v, and then d hat has been factored out like this, but this equation right here, 
d of x equals a big polynomial times d hat of x is exactly the definition of d hat of x dividing d of x. So let's see what we have. We had from the previous board that D was a common divisor of F and G. Now if we start with another divisor of F and G, we end up with that thing dividing uh, the greatest com the common divisor. In other words, this thing D is the GCD of F and G as we needed it to be. And that finishes this proof. Okay, so in an upcoming video, I'll do some examples of writing um, the GCD of two polynomials as a combination of those two polynomials. But it's essentially the extended Euclidean algorithm with polynomials. Okay, so we're done.